let's look at Bitcoin. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So, uh, this is Bitcoin, a long-term um, picture. Yeah. So, we recently lost, um, let me draw it in, the rather important 200-week moving average. That's not, not good. However, we do have another thing uh, for us now. We do have a double bottom. We also have horizontal support. And so when we go here to the dailies, then you qu quite clearly see that there is a floor being built here. So this is interesting. Um, uh, the floor can break. That's the thing about these floors. Um, as far as the stop loss levels. Now let me measure, you know, what kind of level. Yeah. So you see here on the wicks that you can't be too aggressive here on the stop loss. So you have to be a bit, um, yeah, like a 2% stop loss. Um, you could, of course, go with a 4%. But basically, we, do, we just don't want this level to fail. Because if that level fails, then there, you know, there's not that much uh, hope elsewhere really here in, in Bitcoin. Yeah, we might even go down here to the green 50-week moving average, and that would be a drop, um, yeah, seven-ish percent. So that that would be a bit uh, a bit big. Okay, so let's look at these other indicators. Um, so when when it comes to the RSI and the MACD and the PPO, especially the MACD here, it sell, it did send a sell signal. MACD, especially the weekly MACD, is also a very slow indicator. So it's not necessarily like super tradable. Uh, the MACD here on the dailies is about to send the buy signal. Um, we got really oversold. Uh, RSI is currently at 27, which is rather low as you can see historically for Bitcoin. Uh, if we go here, I go multiple years back, this is rare. So we usually see more bullish sentiment than this. So I do think that this is a this is a bullish candidate, but it is quite contingent though on on the double bottom slash horizontal support. Yeah, so when I go into my notes here, uh, yes, yeah, we do actually have another one of those double bottom horizontal supports. As far as the bull goes on the technicals, mm -hmm. so I will give the bulls a seven. However, that seven is completely contingent on double bottom and uh, this uh, horizontal support on the daily data points. If that fails, then um, the technicals uh, go into the red. Yeah, so let's look here at the seasonality for the Bitcoin. So to the left here, it is pretty bullish. We overall have a bullish sentiment into October, but leading up here into, as you can see, later September, it's a bit rocky. Uh, you can see that there's uh, some give and uh, some take from the market. Looking at the table view, approaching 11% loss so far for August. Uh, looking at September here, it's a pretty bearish month though. It is. Um, if you look at last year, then, um, you know, August was pretty bad. September was a bit mediocre. If you look at this, um, in 2018, August bad, but September and also the rest of the year, the year was was pretty bad. Yeah, 2015, 2016, bad August, but uh, you do see that there was bullish sentiment after that, that. So given the weakness we have seen for this month, there is the possibility that even though generally speaking, September tends to be bearish, uh, we have seen that in the past, when August was bearish, September could actually be bullish, or at least not as bad as the August. Hence, when it comes to the seasonality, I do think I will give the bulls a spectacular one here. Um, I would have given them a lot more if it hadn't been for September being a pretty bad month. However, we did see a, a bit of an interesting pattern in other times where uh, August was bearish. Uh, so September could potentially be bullish. 
I usually skip over the fundamentals when it comes to Bitcoin, so we will go right to relative performance. So we go here, and we will now look at some correlations. Bitcoin, USD, like that, Coinbase. Uh, so let's compare it against um, the GLD, the gold. And we might as well compare it against the, the UUP, which is the dollar index, like that. So long term, uh, we have a 65% positive correlation with S&P 500, minus 14% with gold, and minus 55% with um, the dollar index. Short term with daily data points, 29% with S&P 500, 3% negative with gold, and 39% negative with uh, the UUP. So looking short and long term. Um, yes, certainly seems like what happens with the S&P 500 has the biggest effect on Bitcoin. Um, in this case, I think we'll, we will just explore a bit more. Uh, so let's look at Ethereum like that. And all of a sudden, like if we go here to the weeklies. So yeah, 86% positive correlation on the dailies. We are at 48%. So let's look at Ethereum slash the US dollar. So this is pretty interesting. This is very interesting, actually. So you see here that Ethereum, it is, um, it's found support here on the red 200 week moving average. It's been a pretty big deal in the past. Okay, so I did some research into whether there were Ethereum ETFs out there, unfortunately, not yet. So you, you can, of course, buy Ethereum on, you know, a crypto exchange. But if you do want to get an ETF, then you have to wait a bit. But from a, like a technical analysis uh, standpoint, this is, it's a better case than Bitcoin. And also, um, um, you do have, uh, if you go here, yeah, but the seasonality is not that much better. Yeah, let's now compare Ethereum and Bitcoin against each other, like uh, that. And then we will get ETH, USD, the Coinbase, uh, weeklies. So what's interesting here, though, is that Bitcoin has uh, underperformed uh, Ethereum uh, quite significantly. Now, you could argue that this looks a bit rounding bottom-ish, that could be bullish for Bitcoin. RSI, it's, you know, up there, but not like overbought, but it, it's it's higher than it's been in some time. But looking at the price itself, it certainly is much below Ethereum. Looking at the dailies, yeah, there certainly seems to be a bit of a pattern here. Let's look at the time cycles to see whether they are reliable or not. No, I mean, there are some, there are some kind of time cycles here. Um, we might be part of a declining phase though in the pair. So that's possible. Uh, seasonality. Yeah, it does actually favor maybe that there could be a pullback, uh, a weakening in Bitcoin into yeah, mid-ish September, but then some outperformance into October. Uh, looking here at the seasonality for September and October, usually Bitcoin outperforms Ethereum, so that strengthens the case for, for Bitcoin. So in this case, I do think I will give the bulls yeah, let me give them a 5 on relative performance. So we do end up with a 4.3 in favor of the bulls. Uh, we are at the double bottom and also horizontal support. However, if you prefer Ethereum, then we do have the red 200 week moving average support instead, which also is a nice and very tradable. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's look at uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin, USD, and look at, you know, the stop loss level. 
So if you operate on, on the dailies, yeah, I think I think a reasonable stop loss level would be, yeah, you could be aggressive with like a one, yeah, one point five percent, one and a half percent stop loss level. That would cover quite a few of the wicks. Uh, it wouldn't cover this wick and also this one, especially the the last one. Well, the first one during this drop, that was sort of like um, it was like the key arbiter, but that one is three point five percent below us. Uh, that's a wider stop loss. And looking at the weeklies. Uh, you would have this back here as a stop loss. So using just like the closing prices here, yeah, 1.5% covers a lot. Going down here to like, yeah, 5.7% stop loss to cover uh, this one here. That's a bit wider. Um, so yeah, but of course you have to decide, you know, what kind of stop loss works best for you. But you, but you should have some kind of uh, exit plan. Well, let's measure here with Bitcoin. No Ethereum, I mean Ethereum. So in this case, uh, the 200 week moving average is right below us. So here you can uh, be a bit more aggressive on the stop loss, but you wouldn't go to go too wide either either. The key thing though is the wicks. You do see that some of these wicks have really explored, you know, far below the 200 uh, week. In this case, we went 5% below. So um, it is something to be aware of there, that there can be some exploration below. But yeah, I do think that Bitcoin, it's interesting. Uh, so yeah. Um, Definitively uh, going for a bullish uh, position on the Bitcoin. I do want to have a stop loss level. Um, what you can of course do is to divide your position uh, into multiple time frames. So you can have like a long and a short term horizon. So let's say that 30% of your position is without a stop loss level, meaning it is long term. Uh, and then you can have like, you know, 70% with like a more tighter stop because then you might get shaken out of your short term um, pot, but the long term will still remain. But I do think it's a pretty good, good idea to always have. I think that the majority of positions should have some kind of exit plan in place because the problem with the market is that there's more securities looking for money than there is money uh, for these securities. And that is one of the key reasons why most securities do not go on to make, you know, 52-week uh, high, uh, highs uh, consecutively. It usually only, ha only happens to a select few that, you know, get the lion's share of the money. And when it comes to Bitcoin, um, the development of, you know, Bitcoin as like a real alternative to the financial system, it's been super slow. Uh, a lot of people expected it to be way further along. Uh, you can barely find any, any like big e-commerce store that is like pure Bitcoin. Um, of course, you could argue that it's a store of value, but um, the, the strongest part of any currency is its uh, network. Of, uh, of you know of participants so the bigger the, the network is and the more active the network is then the stronger that currency becomes and that is something that bitcoin really needs to develop and pretty fast because it currently doesn't have that sticky network um but if it can, could develop that then uh, this notion of it of it becoming an alternative uh, currency would have a lot more merit, and um, it would also be a lot more difficult for, um, to uh, to sort of remove it or exclude it for the from the financial system. Given that there now is this push to get Ethereum uh, ETFs, that is that is very good news. Uh, there seems to be like wider acceptance in the financial market you know, among the, like the established players, so to speak. And that it does create some level of stickiness as well, as, at least in 
cryptos being an investment. But you know, the key thing about being a currency is to be traded. 